Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I am Krish Mohan. Before we get into this week's episode, I just want to let you guys know that if you want to support this show financially, you can donate to the Patreon and become a patron for only $2 a month. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha to find out all the details, the rewards, and the goals that are being set through the Patreon. I do this full-time. Uh, I uh, tour and create comedy content full-time. I put out most of my content for free. So if you want to help su uh, support that and support what I do, uh, go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha uh, and donate uh, a couple bucks if you can. Just starting at $2 a month. All right. Let's get into the episode. Usually when I go on tour, I head into the Midwest or the South and people get concerned, right? Because I'm an immigrant and there are certain stereotypes in that region that one does need to be concerned about. But I love the South and the Midwest because for as many right wing, super conservative folks that are down there, there are just as many progressives and liberals that are down there. And you just got to look hard enough to find them, right? It's like the hunt for the Red October, but it's more of the so-called blue wave now. And, and, and all you got to do is go out there and put the call of the left, right? I just head into the town that I'm at and I wait outside the venue and I and I just say, universal health care, critical thinking, fund public education, Universal basic income, separation of church and state, and every like all the progressives and liberals will just march right up to the venue. What's really awesome about the liberals and progressives in the South is the fact that they are just as aggressive about their beliefs as the conservatives and the rights right is right because all these liberals and conservatives are like, hey, why y'all fucking with that queer? All right, love ain't no goddamn political argument. All right, let's 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 just be clear about that. Let them love who they want to love. And for that matter, now there is abortion. That's between a woman, her partner, and her doctor. All right, you put your goddamn signs and weird photographs away or else I'm going to beat you with the biology book. How about that shit? I love it. I love it. I appreciate passion of all forms that means you give a shit about something and right now we need more give a shits in our society but people do get nervous though especially with the administration that we have in place now people get concerned about touring the south and the midwest and people ask me all the time you know do i get a lot of trump supporters to come to my show and if i get into arguments with trump supporters a lot and the truth is i don't uh, I may I get maybe one or two every once in a while uh, and they're fine usually they're fine folks you know they they look like we do they speak English as proficient as we do which is at the fourth grade level to be honest I kind of feel bad for Trump and follow me on this because I know we have a bunch of lefties that are watching the show right now that just had an aneurysm right look that's a 73-year-old man that ran for the highest office in the country to make some friends. That's why he did it. He didn't want to be president or, or, or run a country. He knew it would make him popular, and then maybe people would ask to dance with him. But boy, it, it did not work out, huh? It did not work out in his favor. I mean, he is popular in terms of the fact that people know who he is, but not in the terms that they want to invite him to parties. 73 years old and he doesn't have any friends. I mean, that is depressing. I mean, that's so sad, right? I, th I, think, I think people do befriend him and then he says some wild, weird shit and then they disagree with him and then he fires them from their friendship, right? And, that, and that's the saddest part of it all. He just doesn't know how to retain friends. He's like, look, you fired. It's like, whoa, Donald, I don't think you can fire friends. I don't think that's how this whole friendship things work. And, and I'm, you know, you, you can't say that stuff about Mexicans as your friend. He's like, no, you fired. Give me the bracelet back with my name on it. I'm going to go back on Twitter and look for new friends. 
73 years old. He's one of the oldest presidents we've ever had. I mean, why don't we have an age cap for the presidency? I mean, you have to be a minimum of 35 to run for office. And I think once you hit 50, you should just sit down and relax, right? You've done enough. It's too old. It's like your, your grandfather, right? Do you really want your grandfather running a country and dealing with diplomatic affairs? Look, my grandfather is 92, okay? When he was 73, he was afraid of the cordless telephone. Is that really someone you want in charge of healthcare? If he doesn't get the cordless telephone, how is he going to be with giving people the right of health? I don't think that's going to be on the progressive docket, right? He's just going to be like, get the leeches back. And it's like, whoa, no, it's, it's a bad idea. Don't, don't do that, Grandpa. Don't do that. And look, I know I'm shooting myself in the foot here because I'm a big Bernie guy, but... Bernie's like a thousand years old, right? He's got stories about how he was hanging out with Abraham Lincoln and helped him figure out that slavery was wrong and that's what he should like go on because when Bernie was hanging out with the pharaohs all those years ago, he knew that it was going to come and bite them in the ass. The dude's old, right? Every, every speech that he gives, every time he's on stage, like I just look at him and I'm just like, sit down, get him a chair. Why is nobody getting that man a chair, right? Like it's, <laughs> he just looks so hunched all the time. He's like hunched over, you know, and I think it's because the the weight of the middle class is literally crushing him, right? Like it's just, we put all the hopes and dreams of the working class on this man's back and it's crushing him and crushing him into the world's most beautiful democratic socialist diamond. And then maybe we will have enough money for health care. I've had a lot of people ask me why we do this, right? Why do I go on tour so much? Why do you drive everywhere, right? The idea that I get into a car and go from city to city telling jokes and philosophizing on stage is out of the depths of reality for some people. But honestly, it's one of the best things you could ever do. If you ever get the chance to travel, I highly recommend it. If you ever have the opportunity to just go to a different place for a little while, you should do it. It's It, it really is astounding. We just went on a cross-country tour. I went on with, 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 with my fiancé, and it's amazing. It's an amazing journey. And people, are, people get weird about the fact that we drove throughout the entire country. And here's the thing. Uh, flying is awful. But the idea of flight is amazing and beautiful. And we took that idea and added security and TSA and an indoor mall and fucking ruined it, right? We're one of the only mammals that have figured out flying. It's us and bats. And for a long time, bats use that against us, right? They're like, oh, sure, you can pick stuff up with your hands, but can you even see and reach your god? And now, and, and now we can say, yes, yes, we can. And what we've discovered is th they're not in the clouds. It's just the atmosphere we're destroying. So suck on that, bats. But seriously, though, if you, if you do suck on that, it, uh, it will render you extinct, probably. I mean, everything leading up to the miracle of the flight itself is awful, right? I have to be groped without anyone buying me dinner and then they're, they're, I have to deal with racism and classism. And those things definitely don't come with dinner. And by the time we take off, I don't even care that we're doing something amazing that birds have accomplished. I knew I was done with flying when I was at the O'Hare Airport in Chicago a few years ago. And I saw an older woman that was cursing out and aggressively trying to attack the flight attendant. Okay, she got carried out by two Chicago police officers. They had her by the armpits, and then she started kicking them. So one of the cops went to her legs and restrained them, and they carried her out like a pig on a spit. At that point, I was just like, yeah, I don't think this mode of transportation is bringing out the best of us. But I really do love driving across the country, right? You get to see so much more. You get to meet so many more people and try to understand different walks of life, right? You get to understand the world 
just a little bit better. The way I see it is that it's like a jigsaw puzzle, right? We all start with like 10 pieces. And then every place we go, every story we hear, every person we meet, every perspective we get, every interaction we have, we just gain a few more puzzle pieces. Some that fit in with, with sections that we already have, others that start whole new sections. But with each piece of pu the puzzle we get, it starts getting a little bit clearer. And look, there are people out there that don't want to listen to another person's perspective or see how somebody else lives their lives, right? Those people look at the 10 puzzle pieces that they have in their hands and think that's the whole world. And that kind of arrogance isn't going to help figure each other out, let alone the rest of the world. And, the, and look, the reality is we're probably never going to finish the puzzle, but we might get close. And that's amazing to me, right? That's, that's why you should leave and go somewhere else every once in a while, right? Talk to someone different, listen to an oppositional viewpoint, collect your puzzle pieces. So I hope that this... Uh, this video and, and all these other videos that I put out uh, add just at least one piece to your puzzle. That's been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I am uh, very excited to be back uh, recording these videos for you guys. We have some uh, cool content coming out for you guys, some in-depth stuff uh, and more more little uh, philosophy type stuff, um, y you know, just sort of coming out of my head. Uh, less news-related type stuff uh, coming down the pipeline. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up uh, and a share. Share it with a friend. Share it with an enemy, whoever you think might uh, benefit from listening to a video like this. Uh, share it around. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. That's right. I'm on Instagram, motherfuckers. Uh, you can follow me at, at KrishmohanHaHa. Uh, like my Facebook page. And uh, sign up for the email list. It's probably the best way to keep in touch with all of this stuff and know when we put out videos uh, and all the tour updates coming up. Um, if you want to support this show financially, you can do it by donating to the Patreon and becoming a patron starting at only $2 a month. Go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, you can get all the details, the rewards, the different tiers, the goals. Basically, uh, this is what I do full time. This is what I do for a living. Uh, I uh, tour full time and I put out comedy content uh, full time. So if you want to help financially support that and put food on my family's table, uh, please consider donating to the Patreon. Again, go to patreon.com slash Krishmohan ha ha. Uh, but another way to help support the show is by becoming a subscriber of the Bandcamp. Go to ramen noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com uh, you can find all of my stand-up comedy albums there and if you do subscribe you get uh, exclusive underly socially conscious storytelling and stand-up comedy that's not available on all my albums um, directly to your inbox uh, so go that again is ramen noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com uh, I do have live stand-up comedy shows coming up super excited working on my full new hour called empathy on sale I will be coming to uh, Georgetown, Kentucky, uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Lansing, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I have shows coming up in Pittsburgh, uh, hosting some shows in Pittsburgh. Uh, I will be at, in Washington, D.C., Easton, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, and I'll be opening for Lee Camp in San Francisco and Santa Cruz. Uh, for all of those details, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. You can find all of my tour dates there, all of my stand-up comedy albums, uh, and a bunch of other cool stuff that's out there as well. Uh, check out the links in the description below, and uh, we'll, we're going to be back doing more videos. Super pumped. Uh, come hang out with me on the road. Uh, but till then, thanks for getting into it, and we'll see you on the road.